Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and some of my gear isn't safe anymore. Here's why. Lifespans. We get 80 years, the mayfly gets a day, jellyfish live forever, and these guys have them too. Hold on. What of this is just commercialist bullshit? What's real safety advice and what do I actually have to replace in the new year? Start by looking at your helmet. Most of these have a born on date. Check online because different manufacturers use different coating systems. Every major player from Shoei and Arai to Snell in the EU recommends three, four, or five years as the lifespan of your lid. That's a mixture of guesswork and greed. There's never been a proper study of used motorcycle helmets, partially because used depends a lot on the user and partially because they want us to keep buying these things. So let's take age with a grain of salt. We're self-respecting humans, not cogs in the corporate machine. We can make our own safety call here. First inspect the shell. That every nick and scratch from every accidental drop constitutes a fatal blow is a myth. Minor surface marks have no appreciable effect on the shell's ability to stop a puncture or disperse an impact. It's only significant chips and cracks revealing the under layers of the shell that we're really concerned about. I've destroyed a lot of helmets, and the thing that always impresses on me is how resilient they are. We may treat them like fine china, but this usually doesn't ruin one. The main concern is when a helmet gets impacted with weight inside of it, and that can cause the EPS foam to compress, a one-time safety function that would render the lid spent. This is why the geniuses at Snell recommend I avoid hitting stuff with my head. I also avoid storing heavy objects in my helmet, and repetitively resting it on my mirror. These can similarly cause compression in the EPS, which I'm checking for now. Nope, there's no shell or EPS damage. So next I put it on and perform a shake test. Short, fast movements reveal the quality of my comfort liner. If the helmet moves with me, all good. But if bucket legs behind brain, that means your liner is compressed to the point of improper fit and the lid is toast. If it's any consolation, that might be because you look fabulous. Ladies and gents who wear makeup and hair product kill liners quicker due to the chemical transfer. People who sweat kill them quicker too due to moisture. You can delay the inevitable by wearing a beanie or a breath deflector. You could also just change the interior padding when it wears out rather than buying a whole new helmet. So as long as I haven't damaged the shell or EPS and I keep replacing the interior liner, I can use my helmet forever. Nope! Hold on there, Don Juan. See, manufacturers employ an in-house witch, and she stands at the assembly line and curses every helmet that goes by, and her name is Exposure. New helmets are filled with resins and oils, and that makes them spongy, but these things evaporate, leaving your helmet a brittle shell of its former self. So even if your lid passes the shell, EPS, and liner tests, it will eventually crumble into retirement. This happens very slowly in the box, but quicker in the wind, heat, rain, and salt of the road. So here's the approximation that I go by. From the born on date, eight years after it left the factory. From the date of first use, five years after it left the garage. Or 70,000 kilometers, whichever comes first. And that brings us to Curiosity Corner. Is it better to buy a $400 helmet and replace it every six years, or to buy a $200 helmet and replace it every three? Trick question. Price and safety are not directly related, so usually, you're gonna be better off with that newer, cheaper helmet than with the expensive older one. Also, materials and safety standards improve over time, so the 200 buck bargain of three years from now will be safer than the 400 buck beauties of today. Probably. Gloves. Unlike your helmet, gloves are in constant contact with the bike, meaning they literally wear away. If you're a tremendously boring person, you'll probably notice that the palms of your gloves get microscopically thinner over time. When I tested my two-year-old climb adventures against an identical new pair, they showed about 50% deterioration in seam strength, abrasion, and heat resistance. Those gloves also had soft knuckle armor, which does deteriorate at a slightly slower rate, as we'll discuss in a minute, but that's rarely the limiting factor with gloves. It's mainly about material thickness of the palm. To me, around 50% is about the edge of acceptability, and that usually comes around 20,000 kilometers in my experience. With jackets and pants, you're unlikely to wear through the textile or leather, unless you spend a lot of time doing this. Rather, we must check specific areas to see if it needs replacing. First, armor. 
Now, foam pads absorb impact by compressing and crumbling. So they need to be replaced after a big crash or after about 50,000 kilometers of not crashing since these become creased from frequent bending. If a pad is thin where you're pointy, it's ineffective. Same goes for EVA armor. Silicone and thermoplastic armors can outlive a jacket so long as you don't fall on them, but viscoelastic armors will not. The molecular stability of D3O, for example, has a lifespan of over four years, after which it starts losing effectiveness. So when you celebrate your orange friend's fourth birthday, you might want to make it a retirement party. Orange things retiring in four years? Oh, I can't think of any jokes to make there. Second thing to check for is fasteners. Fasteners ensure that your protection actually sits over the parts that need protecting. So if they don't close properly, two options. If you live in a different century, you might consider replacing a zipper or two. And if you're the compulsive consumer you've been trained to be, new jacket. Third thing to check for, reflectivity. Even 3M Scotch Light, the arch nemesis of your retinas, it doesn't stay bright forever. Most flavors have an effective lifespan of about seven years, less if you ride in dirty conditions. Final aspect to check is waterproofing. Now, a few people are gonna be keen to ride in a leaky garment anyway, but just in case you were, know that a once waterproof jacket that now leaks is a bad sign. Of stress seams, busted membranes, faulty zippers, you could be in danger of more than a damp t-shirt. Now I'll close with boots and fast because the method is the same as with jackets and pants. Don't crash. Check the lifetime of the armor, although it's more often steel plates and soft stuff, so that'll last forever. Make sure the fasteners fasten, make sure the reflectives reflect, and make sure the waterproofing waterproofs. Theoretically, riding boots can live forever. A steel shank leather pair without any finicky reflectives or membranes, there's nothing perishable there just moisturize them occasionally. So that's when and how I replace my moto gear. Roughly speaking, helmets are eight years in existence, five in use, or 70,000 kilometers. Nice reflectives buy you seven years, D3O, four. Gloves will do about 20,000 clicks, and boots can be immortal. Thanks for watching. <laughs>